All right. So um, I'm going to make my debut by showing you just one case today. This is a 78 year old gentleman who presented with right groin pain for a few months. Um, and he had a gradually enlarging bulge in the right scrotum slash right inguinal region. So naturally, you know, for this kind of a history, he would be sent to us for an ultrasound. And uh, this is his, these are his ultrasound images. Notice the date up here. Um, I placed this date here intentionally. So he had a scrotal ultrasound, which shows us this complex um, lesion, fluid collection, mass, whatever you would like to call it. There are many septations. There are some low level mobile internal echoes. Um, and actually, unfortunately, I can't scroll through. Next time I show cases, I'll get a um, cine loop as well. But there is a thick rind here um, surrounding this complex fluid collection slash mass. Um, and what you see this side is actually the right testicle. The right testicle is displaced to one side. Um, so on the cine, it actually seems to be an extra testicular lesion right here. Just a minute. Looks like I'm stuck. Okay, here we go. Um, I put this in just to show that if you sweep through, the right testicle is separate. It looks separate. So the differentials at this point for this history um, include a complex hydrocele or a spermatocele, maybe a resolving hematoma if there is a history of trauma. Um, there was no history of trauma in this case. Um, a chronic epididymal head cyst, something chronic giving the septations, etc. Um, or a papillary cystadenoma of the epididymis seen in younger age group in patients with von hippel lindau um, or possibly a tumor given presence of this thick rind surrounding it. Um, the other thing was there, were, there was no vascularity within that lesion, but the thick rind surrounding it did have some vascularity. Um, or maybe a lesion arising from the testis but growing exopatically. The only thing is it looked like this lesion was displacing the testis to one side. Any thoughts at this point, or do you guys agree with my differential? I don't hear any response. So <laughs> if anybody wants it. to chat in, they can too. Yeah. But anyway, before I disclose what this is, I want to continue and show you what happened subsequently. So indeed, in 2015, he underwent an orchiectomy. I'm keeping the surprise for the end. Um, so notice how three years later, he presented with a similar looking mass on the contralateral side. And it looks very similar to the ultrasound that we saw from 2015. Um, again, a septated complex extra testicular lesion here. There is a lot of vascularity within the testicle um, and maybe within a thick rind surrounding it. At this point, for some reason, um, he was asked to get an MR. Um, I don't think- I mean, just, was... based on, just based on this, I would yeah. have thought more of the sort of complex pyocele Mm -hmm. It doesn't look to me as much like a mass as like some kind of infectious process or. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, his presentation didn't suggest that he had any infection going on. Um, he also didn't have a history of trauma. It was just a gradually enlarging, dull, achy pain kind of uh, bulge in that region. So I agree. Um, and indeed, on the previous ultrasound, um, we did give a differential of a complex hydrocele or a spermatocele. Um, so then this time around, for some reason, he got an MR. Um, I'm not complaining he did because we get to see a flavor of what this uh, appearance is on MRI. Um, so here are the sagittal, coronal, and axial titubated images. This is the testicle that is displaced. And the lesion is a complex mixed solid and cystic lesion. Um, there is probably some hemorrhage within it. You can see like a layering, uh, a fluid layer within it within one of the components. Um, and this is just to show you that the testicle was separate. And I'm going to keep scrolling to show you the post-contrast images. Um, so indeed, the cystic components did not show any enhancement, but there was some thick rind of enhancement surrounding the lesion. This is the coronal reformatted image. The testicle is displaced. This seems to be an extra testicular lesion with some thick rind of enhancement surrounding it. Um, here is the pathology from the right testicle. This is the first time that he was operated. So this turned out to be a malignant mesothelioma of the tunica vaginalis. Um, this is indeed a very rare, here is the microscopic appearance. I don't know what is what here, 
but I just put it in for special effects. But this is what the lesion looks like. Um, and indeed, these are rare tumors. Um, when I looked through the literature, there are just case reports. I didn't see any one solid review paper with multiple cases. But these are described predominantly in the older age group. However, one of the case reports was in a much younger male. And these can be bilateral and synchronous at the time of presentation, or they can be metachronous, as was in our patient. Um, now, in general, malignant mesotheliomas are more common in the pleura, followed by the peritoneum. Uh, and tunica vaginalis malignant mesotheliomas comprise only 0.3 to 5% um, of mesotheliomas. Um, again, just like elsewhere, exposure to asbestos is a well-established risk factor. However, in patients without an exposure to asbestos, chronic inflammation or chronic epididymitis, chronic hydrocele is also said to predispose to this condition. There are three histologic subtypes that have been described, epithelioid, sarcomatoid, and biphasic. Our patient had the biphasic variety. In general, the epithelioid variety is more common in the peritoneum and tunica vaginalis. Um, so, you know, the reason I wanted to share this case with everybody is it looks just like a chronic hydrocele. Um, and like you said rightly, Aarti, based on the ultrasound, I, again, if I come across a picture like this, I would, my first impression would not be a mass. I would go into details of trauma or pyoseal, chronic hydrocele, just like you said. But um, if we see any solid components, like there are some case reports that I looked at that showed solid thickening adjacent to the testicle. Um, but there is, again, a big differential for extratesticular solid masses. So, you know, um, prospective diagnosis of this condition is truly tough. Um, these patients can have inguinal lymphadenopathy. In fact, the second time when this gentleman presented with the left scrotal mass, he did have inguinal lymphadenopathy, which was sampled. Um, and so this is just something to keep in mind. Staging can be performed with PET-CT and the treatment is radical orchiectomy. Uh, radiation and chemotherapy, the role is not clearly established. So that's all. Okay, I have a few questions for you. Yes. Um, so he had a mass on one side mm -hmm. and it was resected and I presume that came back mesothelioma. Yes. Was this mass on the other side, do you think it was kind of direct extension and connection from the first mass? Or um, do they tend to be bilateral? I mean, I assume there's some kind of connection. And I guess the second question is, mm -hmm. should they have done a radical like biorchiectomy the first time mm -hmm. around if they knew that it was mesothelioma um, after the first path came back? Sure. So um, I, when I looked at the 2015 ultrasound, they have obtained images where they show a tiny cystic area at the inferior aspect of the contralateral testicle as well. Um, and that is discrete and separate from the right-sided lesion. So to begin with, I don't think that um, you know, these were in continuity. I think these were two discrete masses. And you know, first time when they went in, they didn't know what the pathology would have turned out to be. But I guess, um, after they resected and the path came back as malignant mesothelioma, um, I don't see any conversational thought process of going back for um, complete orchiectomy. I don't see that. Um, and we actually, in the first ultrasound, didn't comment on that tiny cystic area there. Um, so I guess they assumed that there's nothing on the contralateral side and just wait and watch. Yeah. But, and probably it's so rare that maybe we don't know, yeah. like, how often it's bilateral or not, but, right. um, and then my other question right is the second case where you had, um, like say, for example, that had been, or what we presume to be a pyoseal. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been consulted to put a drain into a scrotal pyoseal and how do you feel about it? Yeah. So, um, we have been, to be honest with you just once and it was huge. And uh, because this is extra testicular, there is no contraindication to percutaneous aspiration or sampling or draining this. For intratesticular abscess, I would not offer percutaneous drainage. For obvious reasons, we don't biopsy the testicle. But for extra testicular abscesses, I don't see why we cannot offer them. And we did offer in that particular patient, but it didn't work because it was very complex. And as you know, for multiseptated lesions, just one IR drain is not useful. So the surgeons did have to go in, but as an acute temporizing measure, we, we went in and drained the largest locule and left the drain there, but uh, the drain fell out as quickly as it went in. 
Okay, yeah, so we've gotten some consults to drain um, pyo seals, and we prefer not to, like you were saying, because often they're just too complex. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a large one, if it's chronic, um, the urologist can sometimes just do like a debridement, um, mm -hmm. so stay extra testicular and drain the pyo seal. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, occasionally we have put a drain in if they've you know gotten to their wits end and like tried prior debridements and it's coming back. Yeah. Um, so uh, something you can do out there if you if you're doing um, percutaneous strains and stuff. Yeah. Awesome. The uh, chat box says, "Great case. Wow, nice case." Thank you. 